All right, guys, good morning. It's getting to be that time of year. The first hint being the sweatshirt. Winter is closing in on us. We're trying to get caught up on a lot of those little small knickknack jobs that kind of get put off and thrown away with all the big stuff going on. So today, we're going to try to take the uh, CF572 Bowlop brush cutter we got in our possession here and see how well she fits on the old Taco TL240. just saying to your people he hadn't hooked up to this yet with this machine so a little different but yes it looks huge yeah, it looks really big from up here holy cow i still have my two complaints with the taco is the noisy cab and it's hard to see to hook up and everybody's like well put some perforated metal there well it don't do a whole lot of good when there's three more layers of steel underneath it yeah i was gonna say that's not the only layer that you'd have to get rid of I mean, what it's not what bad. do you want us to do y'all want us to look through some little big old holes or what there's still it's not bad lines it's just, in there it's not bad it's a good suggestion but it's just not feasible agreed all right oh wow these hoses are almost too short for this we gotta go story of your life so everybody always asks what this is. Yeah. You know what that is? I think I've learned, but go ahead and enlighten me again. It's a taco safety feature. So if something is hooked in here, it will not allow your quick attach to work. So that way you can't unhook your quick attach and drive away and rip all your hoses off the machine. Apparently, that's, that's pretty smart. Apparently in the test and tune mode on these machines, they had a Captain Cleman in the mix. <laughs> 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 oh, poor captain. Poor captain. He's not here. Better be quiet. He may be on his way here. Yeah. Well, that all worked. You think so? Oh, look at you. You're actually putting your cap on. Actually, I didn't take this off. Can't that cap else. keeps all that pin connector clean, and somebody never puts it on. <laughs> it's on now. First time for everything. All right, you think we got a spinny spinny going on here? I hope so. No, but I'll stick the camera down there. I do need a haircut, but not this type. All right, here we go. Pretty sure that lowers more than ears. Hopefully, I can get past them fenders. I don't know if that brush cutter would fit in between the fenders. You might have to back on. You gonna put it on the rail? Oh, I don't like that look. Nope. It's blade only, so anything's touching. I would not recommend that, DP. Yeah. But this is a 20 foot trailer. You're going to have to back on, aren't you? I don't know what it is. It's a short trip, but we just cross the finger. Well, here's the other question mark Will the brush cutter fit between the fender wells? Very well. <laughs>
Good thing you can hear inside that taco cab. See, I'm trying to direct him, but he ain't even looking back here. See that? He gets one of these, but he ain't looking. Well, that'll work. That works out pretty good, actually. And we can still strap down right here in this corner. You know, we can still strap down back here. Uh-oh, what? It's a good thing the taco's got a roll-up door. That's the way this thing sits. The arms will go all the way down. Oh. Your butt wouldn't be getting out of there. This is You'd true. You've got to tilt that thing way up, lower it down to get out, and then that's going to be in an awkward angle where here I can just lay it down flat. Good analysis. Just an observation this morning. Nothing but, facts. Nothing but facts. All right. Mr. Millennial, we got a long trip. <laughs> We're <laughs> literally going on the hill right here behind the market. So, buckle up and hang on tight. Mr. Millennial, it's situations like this where you're really thankful you've got good trailer brakes on the old Chevy. No doubt. I don't know if you guys can see, but this road literally goes down and then goes off like a 100 foot cliff into the river. <laughs> and it's basically a hard 90 to the left if you want to try to make it yeah at least they paved part of it now so it's not yeah. quite as quite as dangerous but I, there's been a few times i've went that way whenever i wanted to go this way oh easy easy oh. you're talking you let a little oh, no. steam pick up there buddy <laughs> well it looks like the water went down the road instead of the ditch you know the classic lack of maintenance issues here uh-huh they better be quiet we may end up getting another job Shh. oh here we go oh, i don't think we're gonna make it we're good. Oh, we got this. We got this. Thank goodness for the new tires. All right, let's get this thing unloaded. Right, guys here's the plan some of you guys may actually recognize this job it's been close to two years ago i think and oh man time time gets away from me it's crazy how fast time goes by but anyways there is a handful of videos on the channel we actually come in here cleared out this whole area if you're higher up on the hill there by the house you can actually see the river from here and now we come back in here every year and try to brush hog this for him just to kind of help maintain the view and uh, keep it grown up keep it mobile keep it manageable so we're gonna fire up the old taco here and see what goes. Like I mentioned before, we have ran this brush cutter on the HLV 90-2 Kubota when we had it. I only ran it one time. I thought the Kubota actually did a fairly decent job of running it, but I'm curious to see how the old taco goes. So let's fire this thing up and see what we got.
didn't quite go quite as planned. I don't think it was supposed to land right there. Get off of it. There we go. Couple things right off the bat. I noticed immediately this machine definitely keeps the blades on this thing spooled up a whole lot better. I don't know if it's because of the settings, the flow or what, but this thing has got way more hydraulic power when it comes to running up. The other thing is, it's a suggestion from you guys. Whenever I was mowing last time, I was keeping the front of the mower kind of tipped down and the back kind of high. You guys got on me a little bit, told me I need to keep the front tipped up and the back down. Definitely makes a huge difference when it comes from uh, not scalping the ground. So kind of going down through here, you guys can see right here, we still got markers. They kind of mark the property line. We got a great big cliff down there. So let's go a little bit farther. We'll get the perimeter uh, knocked out here. And then, yeah, we definitely don't want to go over the cliff. Get the perimeter knocked out here and then we'll get the center knocked out. you guys didn't believe me there was a cliff down there can you guys see that on camera it's probably about 30 feet down it don't look like a soft landing so we're gonna try our best not to go over the hill but the good news is the ground seems to be pretty dry got pretty good traction and it's marked fairly well up there from the weed to tree line so i'm gonna work my way on up around the corner here a little bit let me get that figured out then we'll start taking some passes out here in the middle see how fast we can knock this out up here on top you guys can kind of see the outline a little bit better it made it all the way around kind of got the edges all pushed back a little bit so let's start making some passes back and forth and knock the center out
missed you guys for a second. That was a close one.
Hello boat out guys, looks pretty good. It's hard to tell, but this is really rocky and still a little bit uneven. It was really hard to get this smooth when we uh, came in here, took all the trees off of it and turned it from woods to basically a field. You guys can see the rock protruding through. We were kind of limited on how much uh, dirt we could rob from different places to fill in other places because, well, because of the rock. So it kind of is what it is, but the machine, the brush cutter, it did awesome. This is exactly what we wanted to do when we did this, is just be able to come in here, mow it, maintain at least once a year. And that one there, that one there, well, that tree fell off the neighbor's property. It's just a little bit on the big side for the brush cutter, so we didn't quite tackle that one. So I don't know what it is. I think it's a combination of three different things. I think the new skid steer is definitely a big help on the brush cutter. A little bit of experience and your guys' suggestions from the first time I used this thing, this thing seemed to cut so much better. I didn't really fight it at all on this job. Extremely, extremely impressed with it. I was actually fairly impressed with it before we used it on the Kubota. We didn't mow anything quite this rough, but I thought it did a good job. But man, this is a whole different level here. Really, really, really pleased with it. If you guys are interested in any of these Bible Light brush cutters, I will link Clint from CNC Equipment down in the description. He is actually a dealer from them now. They have several different makes and models. This is this is a 72 inch. I think they make one size bigger yet and several size smaller. So anyways, guys, it's getting late. That's gonna be a wrap on this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did give her a big old thumbs up. Wanna make sure you don't miss out on what's coming up next. I consider subscribing. That way, we can catch you on the next one. I'll head to the house. See ya. Good news, the brush cutter doubles as a brush bulldozer. <laughs>